John chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Good morning and welcome to today's Thought for the Day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you make your word speak to our hearts so that we might know its truth and that we might act upon it by the strength of your spirit and his work within us. To the glory of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of being a member of a jury in a trial, or maybe you've been called to be a witness in a trial of some sort. But at the end of the legal procedures involved in such dealings, the judge asks the returning jury a question. Member of the, members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? And what the judge is asking is that on the basis of the processing of the trial, which includes the testimony of the witnesses, the evidence for and against the accusation made by uh, the prosecution and defence, and the persuasion of the learned counsel, the lawyers who are standing in defence or in accusation of the person who's in the dock, on the basis of these three things, the jury is asked to discuss and decide the outcome. And they deliver a verdict, guilty or not guilty. Well, in these words of John's Gospel, following Jesus' discussion with Nicodemus, John is talking about a verdict. Now, he's already said that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, has not come into the world to condemn the world. But strangely, nevertheless, he says, the world is condemned. And what he means by that is that all people, whoever they are, wherever they are, stand with a verdict already pronounced. In other words, some kind of trial has already been expedited and some kind of decision is already evident. And the evidence is guilty. So what's he saying? Well, what he's saying is that the state of mankind's heart, whoever they might be, is by nature inclined to exclude light and to incline towards the darkness. Now, we know all about light, don't we? Uh, we prof probably love the day more than the night time. And when it's dark, if you want to discover what your latest electricity meter reading is in the cupboard under the stairs, you will have to take a torch with you. And you shine light into that dark place in order to read what is written there for your next return. Light reveals things. Darkness hides things. So what John is concerned to say is that our experience of life in the way that we live indicates to us that we are already condemned by God because we have rejected him. Now, when you were at school, you might have uh, loved or hated chemistry, but you would have come across the situation where perhaps you have two beakers with a clear, transparent liquid inside. And you hold them up and you can see no difference between them. You have been warned not to drink them. They would do you damage. How do you de decide which is an acid and which is an alkali? Well, you use something called an indicator. And one of the most common is something called litmus paper. What the litmus paper will do is when it's dipped in either solution, 
it will turn blue or red dependent on whether that is an acid or it is an alkali. In other words, it tells you something about what is already true. It shows up what is actually the nature of what you have immersed the litmus paper in. And this is a good illustration of what God sends Jesus into the world to do. Jesus is the light of the world. John has already told us that in chapter 1. He is later to expand on that by telling us the words of Jesus himself, who claims to be the light of the world. So as light has come into the world, it has revealed what is true about what's going on inside us. We're either going to want to come towards the light and be in it, or we're going to want to flee the light and get back into darkness. And what John is saying is that the reason that you would want to pursue darkness is because you have things going on in you that you don't want exposed. Their deeds are evil, he says. So it's the attitude of people to Jesus which indicates their state before God. And here is what God is saying to you today if you are not a Christian. How have you responded when you've heard about this Son of God who has come into the world? If you are a Christian, you may recall there was a time when you reacted against him. When you said in your heart and in the hearing of others, I don't want to know. I don't want to hear about Jesus. I don't want to hear what he taught. I don't want to know anything about what he did. In actual fact, you may have even ridiculed some of those things that were said about his actions and his speech in our world. And that demonstrates the natural inclination of the heart to run away from the light. It's only by God's grace that we are turned around, our eyes are opened and we can see the kingdom of God and we then begin to walk towards the light. Jesus does not come to condemn the world, he comes to save it. He comes to bring his light into your heart. He comes to reveal in you all of the things that need putting right if you are to be one who lives with God forever. And that is God's loving desire for you if you are not a Christian this morning. And if you are a Christian, you can rejoice that this has happened to you and that God has brought you to himself through his Son and what he has done. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending this light into our world, which shows us starkly the state of our own hearts. And we pray that by your grace and by your mercy, you would enable us to respond by coming into the light of Jesus, so that we might live forever. In his name we pray. Amen.